Hey guys, it's Chris Clothier, your host of the Grind Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, whatever day it is, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And I really appreciate the fact that you've joined me. You're listening to me. I, I promise to keep this short, sweet, like I always do. And hopefully on point, because today is a very important day for us as far as podcasts go. This is a podcast that is all about time. It's all about how we use our time. It's all about the actions we take because we're talking about the difference between being patient versus procrastinating. The difference between, you know, do I need to be taking actions just for the sake of saying I'm doing something versus being patient and waiting for the right moment, the right idea, the the whatever the scenario ends up being that it's the right time for us to get started versus, again, waiting constantly for the perfect time to get started. You guys have heard me say a lot of different things on this um, podcast about time and how we use it and are we procrastinating or is there ever a perfect time to get started? Y'all know my answer to that is no. The perfect time is today. It's right now. But that doesn't mean that we should jump out there and start a business or start investing in real estate, whatever it ends up being, without a plan. And sometimes a plan requires us to be patient. So that's what I want to talk about today. It is something that I get asked about constantly from investors, whether I am talking to them when I'm out on the road and meeting face-to-face, -face, or if they send me emails, or anyone that I'm speaking with on a one-to-one -one basis. One of the most common questions I get is, how do I know when is the right time to take action? And that's a, again, for me, that is that first step. That's, that's moving forward with my business plan or with my plan to build a portfolio, whatever it ends up being. Because being patient is required. It's the number one piece of advice I give on bigger pockets. When I respond in the forums to people asking questions on bigger pockets, and whether it's they're asking a question about my company or other companies or you know, building their portfolios, investing within a particular city, or using a particular um, method to get started as an investor, the biggest piece of advice I give to everyone, it's almost in, in every single forum post I make, is to be patient. You know, there is, there is no rush needed when we are investing in real estate. We will know when we have all of our facts together. We'll know when, we, when everything lines up perfectly for us to move forward. And it may not be today. Now, let's talk about the difference between being patient and being you know, procrastinating and some steps you can take as an investor. I think that's a really great place for us to start. I didn't have it in my notes, but as I'm talking, I'm like, wait, this actually makes sense. Let me, let me, let me dig into this for a second. Somebody that's patient is someone who waits to put a property under contract because that's like that final step. That's that, you know, I am, I'm now am fully committed, but that doesn't mean that we don't take steps to get prepared. Pre-qualification, working with a lender to make sure that I am qualified and I understand exactly what my reserves need to be. I understand, you know, what my down payments need to be. I understand the the price range I need to stay within so that I'm, I'm at a comfortable price versus a price where I may kind of push it, but I'm okay to push it. Everybody with me? That is, that is an example of being patient, but yet still taking action. An example of the same thing of procrastinating is someone that says, I'm going to wait till the perfect deal is there before I get pre-qualified. Because why would I get pre-qualified if I don't even know about a deal I'm going to buy? That is... And I, that's an example of, of thinking about, of using procrastination as a way to think versus being patient and taking actions. Now, you know, that's the, that's the difference between patience and procrastination. Someone says, I'm just being patient and I'm taking my time, which means I'm also not getting pre-qualified. I'm not meeting with a potential um, mentor. I'm not meeting with any potential you know, representatives that can help me find houses. I'm not meeting with any potential wholesalers that, that are looking for new buyers. I'm not doing any of that. I'm being really patient. No, you're not. You're procrastinating. You are making sure that there's plenty of roadblocks in front of you to keep you from ever making a mistake. An example of being patient in that scenario is I'm taking all the steps I need to take to make sure that I'm prepared, that when the property that meets my criteria and I'm fully ready to go all in and put that thing under contract, that... 
I am prepared. So I'm being patient on the property, but I am preparing myself for the day when I need to take action. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of thinking of that one on the fly. It's not even something I wrote down in my notes because um, I just think that that makes perfect sense. Procrastination, they equal excuses. Procrastination equals reasons that we're not moving at all. Procrastination is when I'm waiting for the perfect time. I've said this on the podcast before. There is no perfect time for anything that we're doing. I mean, the, the perfect time is now, you know, and, but, but what does that mean? And what does it look like when we, when we really step ourselves into action, when we step out there and we get going, we can still be patient with all of our steps and that that's in anything. Let's talk about starting businesses because I can tell you that, you know, uh, just today, if you're watching this on video, um, I've got a fresh new haircut. I went and saw my, uh, (laughs) They're laughing at me behind the, behind the camera. I, I went and saw my hairstylist, and I have such respect for her because due to, for many reasons, you know, um, she had to get out there and start her own business. She had to start her own, you know, own get going, I guess. She couldn't procrastinate at all. Um, that wasn't an option. Waiting wasn't an option. But yet she's exercising enormous patience in what her ultimate goal and her ultimate dream is going to be. So today she has her own company, sets her own schedule, works for herself. She, but yet she leans on someone else to provide the space for her. So she's an independent contractor. She has her own space. It's private, but yet it's not hers. And there are other, you know, um, entrepreneurs like herself that have their own space in there, their own entities, their own businesses, but yet they're all reliant on someone else to provide that space for them. Ultimately, she wants to be in business for herself and she wants to be the one that provides that space to others. She wants to own the building. She wants to own the space. She wants to um, provide the avenue where other stylists that are in her position have, uh, you know, a private space, a great space to bring their clients. They, you know, it's comfortable and, but yet she's benefiting from, you know, investing in real estate, from investing in that space, being the entrepreneur that steps out there, takes the risk and allows other people to follow their dreams and, and, and create their own entity. So I love, you know, I was thinking about this. I love the fact that I can tell a little bit of her story because she is the perfect example of the difference between patience and procrastination and, and how you fight the two off. She did not have a choice, which is the best place to be, really. Because when you don't have options is when your only option is to figure out how to move forward. That's where some of the greatest successes come from. And it's unfortunate that that's where some of the worst failures come from too. But if you're truly an entrepreneur, that's a position that you can really rise from. I've told y'all many times on this podcast, I that's where I had to rise from at, at multiple points in my life. So, and that's okay. I love it. For her, she had to take action. She had to take steps to build her own business. But she is also exercising patience in looking for that right space. She has taken meetings with um people who can represent her to find the the space that fits her needs, that meets her vision for her future company. She has multiple times gotten right up to the edge where she's trying to make it happen. And due to, due to some roadblock here or there that she can't overcome, it hasn't occurred. She didn't give up. She continues to remain patient in, with her dream. She is going to own her own salon space at some point in the future that she will help other entrepreneurs in her position to work for themselves out of her space, provide them with what they need. I love it. It is so, it's perfect. It's like the, uh, one of the best analogies we have of, of this, what we're talking about today, patience versus procrastination. Another example, and this is one that that's me. It hits right up close to home with me. I have a, uh, a nonprofit. A few years back, we started a nonprofit called, um, the Cancer Kickers Soccer Club. And my wife and I, we, we have this, um, this charity 
We love it. We have a fantastic team that runs it for us. But we actually wrote the, the business plan back in 1999. We started the entity in 2017. Uh, it wasn't so much that we were procrastinating by it. I wouldn't say it like that. We just had to be patient until we actually had the ability to pull it off. And there were times when that patience meant we put it off to the side and we were taking no action whatsoever. We were in no position to be thinking about anything other than survival, business building, raising our family, all those things. But at which point we could actually focus and think about that entity and starting our charity, we had already taken all the steps. We already had, we knew what we needed to do with attorneys. We knew, we knew what we needed to do with, uh, you know, with, with our research on how to be successful as a nonprofit. We needed to freshen up when we were ready to go in 2016 uh, to launch in 2017, but but hey, we we already had our information together. So here's my here's my second example. We we start our nonprofit and it's going swimmingly. I mean, it's it's amazing what we're able to accomplish really really quickly. Well, I decided I wanted to write a children's book with the nonprofit. Like it was it was always been part of the plan, but four years in, it's it's time to get it done. This is an example of where I absolutely procrastinated, and it may have it may have giving us a little bit of a benefit, but there's, there's no way that it's not still through my own excuses. I wasn't ready to write the book yet. That's an excuse. Um, I didn't have enough research and data, and I really didn't know enough about what I was talking about to be able to write the children's book. Just an excuse. Um, I needed to spend more time really, you know, understanding the impact we were having on our teammates, uh, the kids that we've served through the, the Cancer Kickers Soccer Club, which is for children, um, in order for me to be able to write a children's book. That's just an excuse. I procrastinated over and over and over. Well, then we get into actually writing the book. And now I'm having to exercise patience because and make sure I don't fall back in that procrastination standpoint. So I wrote the book, um, hired an illustrator. And we've spent the last year going through a couple of different drafts of the book. She's done a fantastic job. She's not a full-time illustrator, so it's not like something that was going to happen overnight. We got the book. I made some adjustments to it. It, you know, I took a little while to make those adjustments, send it back to her. She's now done the new drawings and sent it back to me. Now the ball's back in my court. I've been very patiently putting this book together because it's I want it to be impactful. And for four years, I procrastinated. For the last year, I've been patient, just taking all the steps because I don't want to. I don't want to put something out that's not up to my potential, not fully what we want to produce. But at the same time, I can't let like it's time for it to happen. I can't keep letting things get in the way and procrastinate on decisions, procrastinate on next steps. I have to just slowly but surely keep it pushing forward. And be patient that as long as I'm taking the right actions, it will come out. We think that within the next year, 2022, we are going to publish uh, a children's book for the charity. And it's going to, the sales of that book are going to benefit the charity. And that's a huge thing for us. But I have to look back, you know, I thought that was a great example of two things. Of one, of, you know, creating a business plan, but yet not being able or ready to execute and there's a difference. That's not procrastination. That's that's realization of, of where we are. But then finally, when we get it off the ground at the right time to do it and we launch and we run, well, then I fell right into that hole of procrastination. I, I knew I needed to write a children's book, but I came up with all these different excuses to not do it yet. Now, I said earlier that it was to our benefit, but that doesn't, you know, I can't I can't use that as an excuse for my procrastination. What I mean by that is that we learned a lot. We learned a lot from four years of meeting with families, going and visiting kids in, in um, different children's hospitals. The joy of being able to get to know some of these families and these kids that, that we've joined our, you know, our soccer club and that, that we've been able to touch their lives. I mean, it really, really helped us understand what this book needed to be and what it needed to entail and how to tell this story one to tell. But... You know, that's not the, again, that's not, we still, I still made excuse after excuse after excuse to not write it. Now, am I, am I probably in a better position? Sure. Sure. But I have to be, I have to always be able to see, and that's something, the last little point I want to make to anybody listening here today before we're done. You have to know 
and be able to self-diagnose, am I being patient right now um, for the right reasons or am I procrastinating? Am I simply taking steps to say I'm taking steps, but I'm not really moving anywhere, which is a really easy way to say I'm, I'm busy, but I'm procrastinating getting something done. I'm just, I'm doing busy work. We have to be able to figure out what's the best way for me to move forward? What are the actions I need to be taking so that I am, I am patiently moving forward and when everything is, is lined up, it'll, it'll come out great versus I'm procrastinating and waiting for the perfect time. That's a, there's only one person, I guess, there's only in this equation that can tell us where we're at in the, in the process, and that's us. Am I making excuses or am I patiently, methodically thinking about how am I going to be successful? Guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's podcast. This is, um, you know, I'm loving doing this, but I'm also loving the ability to be able to talk about things that, you know, sometimes we're, we're not going into great detail here in 15 minutes. I'm trying to be impactful in these short little these short little bursts and the questions you send me, the feedback you guys give me, the fact I'm able to talk to so many different investors and entrepreneurs, it means a lot. It helps me. If there's anything you want me to talk about here in 2022, if there's anything you want me to be touching on, um, send it. Come on, let's go. Engage with me. Let me know what it is you want to hear about, what you need to hear about. Um, I want to load up our whiteboard over here with ideas, but mostly I want to load it up with stuff that you guys that have been so fantastic want to hear about. We're adding a thousand listeners, a thousand subscriptions to our grind newsletter a month right now. And that's only growing. I think by the end of the year, it'll be over 2000 new subscribers a month, which is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's absolutely blowing us away. So whatever it is you want to hear, let me know. I'm happy to jump on it. I'm happy to talk about it. Stay tuned for lots of awesome things coming this year from the grind podcast. But as we get going, and until we meet again, guys, commit to the grind. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.